Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and this is how to promote muzzleloading part one community. I get asked on a near daily basis. Ethan, I love muzzleloading too. What can I do to help grow the sport and grow the community? In this series, we're gonna talk about muzzleloading as a whole, from art and living history to competition and hunting. I'm gonna be focusing on how to leverage the internet to promote the sport of muzzleloading. We all know about clubs, organizations, and magazines, but the internet is the cheapest way for anybody out there that cares about muzzleloading to promote the sport. And I'm making this series focusing on the internet because the internet is often most improperly used out of any of the means to promote anything. We're going to start simple, but as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm more than happy to answer every question that I can. Your questions really helped me kind of get started with this series and start outlining some of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, so the more questions you ask, the more I can do to make informed videos to help you and other muzzleloading enthusiasts out there. Any topic, and I mean any topic, has a group of people that are interested in it. And this is what we're gonna refer to as the community. Muzzleloading is a large community, maybe not in the sense of the number of people interested in it, though some estimates report that there are nearly four million muzzleloading enthusiasts in the United States. When I say large in relation to muzzleloading, I, I guess I should say broad, because there are so many aspects of muzzleloading that are all wrapped up into the title muzzleloading enthusiast. There are a lot of specific niche interests inside the world of muzzleloading. These smaller groups, or really even smaller communities within the muzzleloading community, can normally be categorized as one of the following. Art, living history, competition, or hunting. No matter who you talk to, their interest in muzzleloading should line up in one of those four categories. It used to be that our muzzleloading community was location-based. My grandfather's traveled all around the country on weekends to compete in muzzleloading matches at different clubs and organizations all over. But even then, they could only be at one place at one time, interact with so many people at that location. Over the last 20 years, we've taken that concept of a muzzleloading community being tied to a calendar and a geographic location. We just run over it with the freight train that is the internet. If you like muzzleloading in 2022, you can literally spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week online, reading, watching, and listening, and talking to people about any niche aspect of muzzleloading. This is not to say that in-person relationships and events are outdated, they certainly are not. They are a crucial backbone of the sport as a whole. But for many people out there starting out or maybe not healthy enough to travel, the online interaction with the muzzleloading community is their first and possibly only means to communicate and, and share their love of muzzleloading with other enthusiasts out there. The internet has become the primary way 95% of us interact with the muzzleloading community as a whole. I remember being a kid, and I, I'm really not that old, but I remember before the internet really kicked on, you kind of had event families that you would only see once a year, and you'd have a lot to catch up on. You know, you'd share campsites or, or share campfires just to catch up on what had happened over the entire year, and that's just simply not the case anymore. People and families that I had considered, you know, kind of event or show friends, I can keep tabs on and, and talk about all of this stuff with all the time if I want to. It's incredible. Each time you participate in a discussion, hang out on a forum, or comment on somebody's photo, you are being an active part of the muzzleloading community. So why do I bring this up at all? If we're talking about promoting the sport of muzzleloading, shouldn't we exclusively focus on being out there and making videos on how to load, how to clean, and muzzleloader safety? Because that's what we all think of, you know, what we need to do to get people interested in the sport, right? I mean, newcomers do have all of those questions, but I bring this up for a totally different reason. I bring this up because I receive far too many messages from newcomers, young and old, that are interested in getting started in muzzleloading, but are sick of being made fun of, yelled at, berated, otherwise harassed for not knowing everything right out the gate. Somebody is coming in on their own, interested in it, and right out the gate, boom. Somebody's just turned them right off, they're gonna sell their stuff or put it in the closet. They may or may not ever return based on that single interaction. That's what happens every day when somebody leaves a nasty email or a nasty comment to a newcomer. And that right there is the number one detriment to the muzzleloading community. It's not anti-gun lobbyists or, or groups. It's not video games. It's not the education system. The number one detriment to the muzzleloading community right now and has been for many years, is when people are jerks. Now I know what you're thinking, sticks and stones, and I'm right there with you. I've endured my share of, of critiques on the channel here, and I will continue to, uh, as long as I'm continuing to post videos. 
That's why you see me showing in video when my rifle doesn't go off, I spill stuff off my bench, or I shoot a mediocre target. But we can't continue to complain about newcomers not being interested in muzzleloading when we continue to tolerate people being nasty to newcomers looking for help. Put yourself in the newcomer's shoes, not when you got into muzzleloading, but when they're getting into muzzleloading now. Newcomers today are seeing videos, articles, and photos online, and they're coming into the community on their own. They think getting a muzzleloader would be neat. As a newcomer, you scrimp and save several hundred dollars to get your first muzzleloader and some gear to go with it. Then imagine going to the range the first time or posting it online for the first time and you're made fun of for not having the best gear. I don't care how tough you are, that sucks and it will always suck. If we wanna promote muzzleloading, and I mean truly promote muzzleloading, we need to take a step back from the last 40 years of what we thought the basics were, what we thought newcomers needed when they were coming in, and we need to first and foremost be kind. So how can I and how can you help build the community around muzzleloading? Be kind to newcomers, offer them some help, and point them in a few directions so that they can learn more. Odds are that if you're interested in promoting the sport of muzzleloading, you know a lot. You've been involved with it for years. Your knowledge and your advice is invaluable to a newcomer. Share it with them openly and honestly. You could make a lifelong friend and you'll actually be doing something direct to help promote the sport. Another way to help is to call out the folks that are being jerks. You don't have to do all of this publicly. You know, I'm not saying to, to start, you know, angry comment threads on the forums and on the Facebook groups and things. You know, you can always reach out to the person that's being, you know, made fun of or harassed privately. Let them know that the community as a whole isn't like this person. There's a lot of room for newcomers here. Another thing you can do is not joke about the quality of somebody's gear. You never know how long it took somebody to work to scrimp and save for what they have. Many of us start at the bottom and work our way up, and that's okay. That's what we need in the sport. That's how we get people started. If the community is pushing people out because of the brand of their muzzleloader or the stitches on their pants, they're never going to stick around. This may ruffle some feathers, but we don't need a nationwide muzzleloader hunting season put in to save muzzleloading. We don't need another Jeremiah Johnson movie to come out to save muzzleloading. The only thing that we as the muzzleloading community need to do to see this great sport continue is to make the community as open and accepting of anybody wanting to try out muzzleloading as we can. The easiest way to do that is to start with how you talk online. We cannot depend on politicians or Hollywood to come in and save this sport for us, but we can depend on each other. I know this was a different video than we're kind of used to here on the channel, uh, kind of in between shooting and building videos that we have here, but um, thanks for sticking around. This is a, a subject that I've been wrestling with uh, most of my life being involved in muzzleloading. Uh, from the time where I was a kid, uh, running around with, with Pokemon cards and, and Pokemon cards being the blame to video games being the blame to phones and, and iPads and things being the blame for people not being interested in muzzleloading. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, and if you, if you see it differently, I want, I want to hear from you. I, I want to have a discussion about this because we can't, like I said, we cannot depend on, on politicians, on Hollywood, even organizations in our own community to step up and do this because it starts, it starts with all of us. As this series continues, I'm gonna talk about how to take a nice photo or video with your muzzleloader, how to promote your local club or local event, all things to try to keep this discussion going so that we can all get active about promoting the great sport of muzzleloading. As always, if you agree or not, please let me know. I'm more than happy to have a discussion about this. And I want to have a discussion about this because I think it's something important for the community. There's a lot of things going on out in the world um, and it's easy to let some of this stuff slide thinking that somebody else is gonna step in and do it. Um, but I think it's important for us to see what we can do as individuals in the community to help see this continue. As always, I'm Ethan and I love muzzleloading. If you'd like to learn more about this or anything else related to muzzleloading, you can check out ilovemuzzleloading.com. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.